There are several different types of layers that can be utilized at the same time to create an image. And it's important to know where and when you should use a certain layer type in order to achieve your desired outcome. Layers are made up of seven different types that have all been designed for a specific task or purpose. Now with that said, most of the layer types can still be edited in a similar manner using layers core fundamentals. So the first layer type that you'll notice is image layers. So if we look at this particular image, you have a background layer. Now, if I was to duplicate that background layer just by dragging that layer onto the new layer icon, you'll see now I have two background layers that are identical. Now I can also actually go to another image and go select all and that should go edit, copy, and then jump back to my original image and then actually go edit, paste. So now I've actually got a different image layer that's on another image file, as you can see here. And we can actually go and resize that using free transform and resize that to a different size, as you can see here. And we'll just click enter and reposition it on the actual image itself. Now that's still a little bit too big to uh, really emphasize my point. So we're just going to reduce that even smaller. Um, so as you can see here, you can have different image layers to make up one composite, which is one of the, the great things about Photoshop. Now, along with image layers, you can actually use adjustment layers together in order to edit those image layers. So for instance, if I was to go to layer and then go to new adjustment layer, we have a range of different adjustments that you can utilize in order to make corrections to your images. So in this case, I'm just going to use curves for this particular example. So if we click on curves and then click OK, you'll notice now I have an adjustment layer and that's sitting on top of my two image layers. Now the adjustment layer allows you to make adjustments to your images. So I can actually make uh, density adjustments as I can as you can actually see here with the actual curve, as you can see. And what it's actually doing is making adjustment to every layer that's actually underneath that adjustment layer. So if I was to actually go and reposition my curves layer so that it now sits uh, not only on top of the generic ba uh, background layers of this particular image, but now we have an image layer that's actually sitting on top of it, you'll notice that any adjustments that I make to the curves layer only affect the uh, background layer, as you can see here. It's not actually affecting the layer that's on top of it. So that's something to take note of when you're actually organizing your layers. You want to make sure that the adjustments you make are positioned in the correct order in, in order for those adjustments to affect the correct layers. Now, along with uh, adjustment layers, we also have fill layers. Now, fill layers allow you to create artificial colors, gradients, and patterns to add to your image. Now, by artificial, I mean they're elements that simply don't exist within the image, um, but have been added, and in a lot of cases, can be made to look very natural and to be part of an image. So let's now go to the layer menu up in the top left hand corner once again and let's go click on a new fill layer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually select gradient um, because gradients can be used a lot with actual uh, photographs especially with skies. So for instance you'll notice here it's got a solid color and you'll see the gradient sorry I'll just move that across you'll actually see the uh, gradient that's been created in this case it's black through to transparent. Now you can actually change that if you wanted to by actually selecting a, another color instead of it actually being transparent you can actually make that uh, be you know dense by actually changing the opacity as you can see there so it's entirely black or we can leave it as transparent or once again you could change it as uh, into a different color if you wanted to. So with gradients uh, and any of the, the fill layers, you can actually adjust them so that they actually balance and fit in with your images. So in this particular example, if I just wanted it to affect the sky, I could go in here and set it to about um, minus 90. So that's the gradients just primarily uh, on top of the sky. I'm going to click OK. Uh, I'm going to just reposition this further down. 
I might actually t uh, actually change the opacity of the gradient layer. So now you can see here it's just becoming slightly transparent to about 50%. And then what I can also do is play around with some of the blending modes, which we're going to go over in uh, the next couple of videos. So with blending modes, you can use certain things like um, screen and overlay in order to affect how that layer actually is blending with the image. So in this case, I've just set it to overlay, and what you'll notice is now it's really blended with the image nicely, and it's got a very sort of dramatic effect. Now, along with fill layers, you can also use shape layers. Now, shape layers are vector or postscript shapes that are created using the shape tool. So if we go down to our toolbar, you'll notice here that you'll have a range of different shape tools that you can utilize. Now, in this particular example, I'm going to click on the custom shape tool, and that allows you to basically create shapes on your image. And they're actual vector shapes, which are postscript, and they're, they're based on lines. And by that, I mean they're not rasterized or they're not pixel based. So what you can do with um, vector based images is actually when you resize them, you can size them to any size that you particularly are interested in, you know, to billboard size if you really wanted to. And you'd never actually affect the quality of the actual um, shape itself. And in this case, you could use it for text as well as different shapes as well. And so you're always going to have a pin sharp um, outline around your shape or your text. Whereas if you had a rasterized pixel based shape or text or icon, for example, and you were to really blow that up and enlarge it, you'd see all the different um, pixels that basically made up that shape. Or in this particular example, it's actually uh, line based. So with shapes, you also have text. And if we click on the text tool, you have uh, a series of different text options available to you under the actual drop down of the text tool. But in this case, I'm just going to use the horizontal type tool. And we're going to basically create a new type layer. And I'm going to type in a word photograph. And we're just going to highlight that. And we're actually going to enlarge it. So in this case, let's just blow it up to say 150 as you can see there or maybe even larger let's go to 250 so now I have a new type layer now type layers are also vector based so you can blow them up as large as you want when you're actually making uh, your text adjustments and, and, and with these type layers uh, you can use them to create things like uh, invitations posters signs and even website designs so it's very useful from that point of view and it's actually a lot easier to create things like invitations using Photoshop than it is to actually create uh, different invitations using say word for example because you have such uh, flexibility with actually being able to move around the text on the actual image canvas and along with that you also have some different effects that you can actually apply to that text um, so things like that are like the blending modes for example uh, if you wanted to use blending modes you could actually add things like drop shadows to your images uh, even outlines strokes for example just by double clicking on the image you've got layer styles so for example we can add a drop shadow and perhaps maybe a stroke outline around this particular image as you can see there that's in black but we'll just chuck it in red to make it really obvious you can even add gradients like we were just playing with then to the actual text itself so it allows you to create some pretty interesting designs with not only your text but other layers as well. So if we just undo what I've just done there with that particular setting, the next particular uh, layer type that we have available to us is smart objects. Now smart objects um, are layers that contain image data from raster or vector images such as Photoshop and Illustrator files um, where the smart objects actually preserve an image's source content with its original characteristics, which enables you to perform non-destructive editing to that particular layer. So you'll actually notice in the previous module we had with Camera Raw, there's an option there to actually select uh, your opening your actual raw file in Photoshop as a smart object. 
And that's something that we'll actually go through in future videos on, specifically on smart objects. So what you can do is you can actually select a particular layer. In this case, I'm going to select the layer one, and I'm gonna to go to layer in the navigational menu. I'm then going to go to smart objects, and I'm gonna to go to convert to smart object. Now you'll notice that a little icon will appear on the actual layer itself. Now, essentially, this is a way of being able to jump back to your original uh, image data. So if I was to actually make some changes to this particular file using, say, image adjustments, and, and in this particular example, I'm gonna use image and highlights, uh, shadows and highlights, I should say, and as you can see there, it's uh, not looking terribly great at this point in time. But if I was to OK that for this example, what you'll notice is now with that smart object layer is that you'll see that it's got smart filters and it's actually got the shadow and highlight adjustment that I've made to that particular layer. And you can actually turn that off if I wanted to. So you can turn off the adjustment that I've just made and and go back to its original data. So this is really good, especially once you start doing you know, several different things, like say, for example, we could actually go and blur the image just for the sake of blurring it, and hitting OK. And you'll notice now that I've also got not only the shadows and highlights, but I've got the blur. So I've got several different um, smart filters that are on that individual layer that I can actually walk back through as I'm doing my adjustments. And um, so if, for instance, you have uh, a series of adjustments that you've made to your image and all of a sudden you're noticing that there's a lot more noise in the image than there was before or there's a lot more post, uh, posterization in the image than you had originally in your, you know, your raw file. What you could do is actually go back through all the different adjustments that you've made to your smart object using smart filters and turn them on and off in order to find which particular adjustment that you made that sort of went too far and actually created those, uh, you know, that, that posterization or that additional noise in your image. And then you can make further corrections to it. So in this particular example, I could actually turn on shadows and highlights again, and I could actually double click on that and click OK. And what you'll notice is now the shadows and highlights adjustment that I've made has just popped up again and it's got the same settings that I made originally. And I can actually go and adjust that accordingly to you know whatever new settings I actually want it to save them as and go click OK once again. So from that perspective, smart objects is amazing. And it really limits, uh, you know, having to go back into your history panel, which you've got up here, you can click on history, actually go back through your history to work out what you've done and where you're up to and, and which particular things that you've done to your image that have caused that particular, you know, posterization. Um, so, you know, it really does improve your workflow. And not only that, you can actually tie it into not only Photoshop, but also um, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. We can actually jump back through, you know, vector images or logos that you're using in Illustrator um, through your smart object, which is really amazing. So you can actually make corrections in Illustrator, save them, and then those corrections will automatically pop back up into your smart object, which is one of the amazing, um, amazing aspects of actually using them. Now, also, we have video layers. Now, this is particularly limited to uh, Photoshop's extended uh, version of CS5, where you can actually go to Layer and actually choose Video Layers. And what this will allow you to do is choose a particular video um, where it will import image stills or frames from that video, which are actually then individually placed on separate layers. So you could actually have several different frames from a video uh, that you could actually go through and then use for, say, a poster or something like that that you wanted to take out of that video and actually start working on. So from that perspective, you can actually choose the series of frames you actually want to be imported into Photoshop and it could be you know from frame 25 to frame 100 and they all get placed on an individual layer so you can flick through them and make sure you get the correct layer uh, correct frame I should say that you want to use for you know your image. So as you can see an image can be made up of multiple layers and it's important to understand not only the different types of layers on hand but also actually how to use those layers in conjunction with each other in order to create better photographs.